Hi everyone, in this video we'll cover part 2 of Ensemble Techniques where we'll look into bagging, we'll look at the definition of bagging, its purpose, its key properties, the three key steps in its algorithm, along with two mathematical definitions, one defining the distinct data points for each bag and also the other one defining why bags variance is lower. The way bagging approaches the problem is that it splits the entire training data into T partitions or bags as we will call it and then use one bag for each base learner it generates as part of the ensembling process. Okay. Next let's look at three properties that it currently has one is that it is going to be bootstrapping the training data as it samples when it generates the T-bags. So each bag is generated by bootstrapping the training data. It lets the base learners overfit the data, but it actually wants the base learners to have as low bias as possible while it has a tolerance for being highly variant estimator. Okay, so to confirm this again, it lets the data be overfit and thus generate low bias and high variance estimator. It does allow for data to be overlapped across the base learners. Okay. Now let's look at the algorithm. Let's illustrate how, what are the key steps in the algorithm. Number one, let's say we are given training data, D, with the number of data points N and features F, where we are marked it as rows and columns here. And then we have been told the decision tree would be our, our model, underlying model. The step one we'll do, or the algorithm is going to do, is it's going to generate T bags from the training data D by resampling with replacement. So the key thing here is it's going to be resampling with replacement using the bootstrap process. So first it's going to generate a bag one where it has rows which are some percentage of your overall row. So here are marked as X percentage but it can be any percentage. It could be 20%, 30% of your overall data points but it is going to use all your features. So the columns continue to be F. Next it is going to generate a new base learner and use this bag for training the base learner. So it is going to generate one base learner using addition tree algorithm and it is going to pass this bag one as the data for, for which it has to be trained. Okay. Now it is going to now go into the iterative process of going back again to step one of generating a bag for a certain number of rows and it come back to step two in an iterative way for it to generate the second base learner whereby that second base learner is being trained using the bag two. Similarly, it'll generate various bags all the way till bag T for the number of rows to be X percentage of N. And it is also gonna generate a base learner T which will be using the bag T for all its training. So this is what it is going to be doing iteratively till bag one to bag T is generated and base learner one to base learner T is generated. Now you have to meet, be very clear that this is a parallel process and it is not sequential, okay? Now once all that is done, the final estimator is either an average for regression problems or a max vote for classification problems whereby the ensemble's prediction is being done. Okay, so that's the overall algorithm baseline and illustration. Now let's look at one important property that is actually hidden under the hood, which is when we are sampling, we have said we are sampling with replacement and that we have already seen that we are going to let data be overlapped between the base learners, which means some percent of data is overlapped between bag one, bag two, or bag, bag T. So how much percentage of data is unique for each bag is a question that we want to answer. Now let's look at a mathematical definition of how to answer that. And with a definition that the probability of each data point being selected 
is one by n. So let's say we have n rows. So the probability that each data at data point can be selected is one by n. And for n trials, the probability of not selecting a data point is one minus one by n the whole power n. So knowing that these two are basic probability definitions coming off our existing uh, definitions, we can put them together as the expected distinct count data points that we will see in a, in, in a particular bag is nothing but n times one minus the probability that the data point has not been selected in n, n trials. Okay. Now that can be approximated through an exponential function because one minus one by n the whole power n can be uh, more closer to exponential function. And that leads to a final answer of 63.2% of the overall data. So therefore, to summarize, the expected distinct data points in each bag is approximately 63.2% of the overall data points. Okay. So that's a good thing to know. Next question we want to ask is, we have, we have said earlier that the property, one of the properties of bagging is it needs it to have its uh, base estimators, base learners, to actually be low bias, but it allows it for high variance. So now we also want to know how an high variance base learner could get offset and be adjusted to a, a lower variance overall when it's actually ensembling. And so the question is, why is bagging's variance smaller once it's ensembled? So to answer that, let's look at this. Assume we have a random variable x with a normal distributed mu and a sigma square as its variance. If we are going to sample it only once, then our mu would be the mean and sigma square is going to be the variance. However, if we are going to sample it t times as x1, x2, xn, and if we are going to put a new variable together constructed as an average of those samples, which is what we are actually doing here as part of ensembling, because we are averaging the bag's predicted output uh, in case of regression and max voting in case of classification, then it is mathematically proven that the mean continues to still be mu. But the variance becomes sigma square by the total count of the bags we have used. Okay, so this is this has one small assumption also, which is that our base learners are independent of each other. However, if the independence is violated, which means there is correlation between multiple base learners, then one of the approximations that we can use, if t is very large, is that our variance is equal to the correlation times sigma square. That means the averaging benefits are constrained by the level of correlation in, in the actual data. Okay. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next video.